Good morning, Michael. Morning, Graham. Can you hear you? me okay? Yeah, all good. So, um, Michael, a colorblind realist artist. Colorblind, really? Yeah, yeah. Um, didn't find that out till I was a teenager. And I uh, was doing a portrait in school and did someone's hair green. Uh, so they, they did the tests and found out. I think I'd always got away with it before because most crayons and pencils and paints have the name of the color on the tube or the, or the pencil. Okay. And so I knew the formulas. So, yeah. And I think it's why I use a limited color palette now. Um, there was a famous artist that was also colorblind. Um, I can't think of his name now, but one, one of the masters was also colorblind. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's not really been inhibiting at all. Um, and I suppose could lend you a, a unique sort of style and approach, really. Who's to know we don't all see colors differently anyway? It's hard to actually verbally yes. describe what you're seeing, isn't it? Yeah. I was quite surprised to read of, of that. You've been a, an, edu an educator for 30 years. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I suppose that's why I sort of drifted away from art a little bit, that I was following an art career. And then I thought to myself, well, most artists teach to supplement an income of some kind. So I got into that. Yeah. But that became really successful. I mean, I was a, a head teacher in two different schools. I, I worked for four different education authorities as an inspector. So that really took away most of my creative urges in, into that. So um, I actually stopped painting for about 30 years. Um, and it was only when I got back in, I uh, took early retirement and got back into painting full time about five or six years ago now. And, and uh, the, the artwork, I've been having a look on your social media. And uh -huh. it, it, it's something that I really enjoyed doing is uh, uh, I go and look at the history of the person's uh, um, profiles and you see the progress. And it's uh, you've got some, I mean, some of your early paintings were very good. But you can definitely see the progress as things are going and and a more streamlined vision of, of where you want to go. Yeah, I think so. And after 30 years of that sort of pent up creativity waiting to get out, there was quite a cathartic moment when I just sort of blurred quite a lot of digital stuff to begin with to get my dark side out of the way. Mm -hmm. And then quite a lot of portraits of pets and, and humans. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. I got fascinated by reflections and facades of buildings and that sort of began to focus me so yeah last three years probably i, I felt like i'm on the right track this this dark side of yours um we, uh -huh. we've we've had a chat before about this and, and you mentioned that it was dreams that you were having it it was uh it's straight i've always had quite vivid dreams i mean like i can still remember the whole narrative of a dream from when i was five six seven eight years old they, yeah. they sort of really stick with me um, and some are more dark and bizarre than the one we're looking at now, <laughs> where it really wouldn't be for publishing. So, but that sort of stranger lurking behind, or is it an idea or a, a thought or a circumstance behind you? Um, the anonymity of the person sitting there in the front um, could be anybody that probably is me hiding behind something, the ruins and all sorts. And can you see the dead bird right yeah. at the front of the, the, the character? That appears a lot in my dark stuff. Um, more a symbol of rebirth and life and hope, strangely, rather than just death and negativity. What? So yeah, I did quite a lot of those, and they were they were sort of cathartic. I, I used I was making a lot of these, and then one day I just sort of woke up and felt I didn't need to make them anymore. Okay. Uh, and then the painting began, which was interesting. But uh, this particular one that we're mm. looking at now, mm -hmm. I can understand. To, to me, I can see being an artist what what the issue is or the problem or the fear in this picture. If you mm. have a look at the roof and if you have a look at the walls, that looks like a canvas that you painted on and all the gesso is cracked and peeled off. Yeah, <laughs> I hadn't seen that before. I, I was sort maybe of drawn to the. <laughs> yeah, that, that that would make a lot of sense to my cracked and warped outlook on life perhaps at the time yeah but the door's open there's a crack of light isn't there shining through there so there's a little bit of hope coming in there yeah <laughs> or maybe that's a skew canvas frame look how skew it is it, it is yes <laughs> it could work. I, had, I genuinely hadn't seen that sort of cracked and uh idea before and the canvas idea but then again that's good because we can each interpret pictures as we like can't we that's irrelevant the to us yeah um i had a look at some of your earlier stuff and uh you were doing a lot of uh, pet images? Yeah, yeah that, that, again, that was sort of 
just to get me back into the flow of, of drawing and painting. Yes. Um, they, they they came fairly popular in terms of pocket money for me. That's the original photograph there and uh, my work in progress on the portrait. So yeah. I, I sold quite a few of those to sort of friends and people locally who wanted pictures of their pets or their children or, or whatever. I wouldn't have called it my serious work. It was quite fun to do. They're, they're very good. I, um, I had a look. There's, there's quite a few dogs um, and mm -hmm. some, some horses as well. That was uh, for a, a, a mother commissioned that for a, a, her 16-year-old daughter's uh, birthday present. Uh, that was the horse they, they had and she rode. I'm quite pleased with that one because uh, when you zoom in, you can see quite a lot of detail of the shiny flesh and the buckles on the harness and all sorts. But you're very good with the eyes. Eyes have always fascinated me. Um, and maybe that's why I like windows now as well. That sort of the, the reflection. They, they tell you something. Mm. Yeah, but also mm. the reflection of the of the eyes. I've always, it's interestingly, I've always doodled eyes when I was little. If I was idly on the phone or something and doodling, it would always be just eyes. Um, so they've always been the sort of focal point of portraits for me as well, I think. Your, your medium of choice? Um, used to be acrylic, um, simply because it dried quicker and I could keep working because I liked a lot of detail and yeah. to wait for a couple of days before being able to go on to it again. Uh, so that was my medium of choice. Recently, I've discovered uh, water-soluble oil colours, um, which are interesting because they've got that sort of rich, creamy, buttery sort of feel that oil paints have. But you can dilute them with uh, water or different medium, and they they still take a little bit longer to dry. But you can build in more texture than you can with acrylic. So my most recent paintings have been in that water soluble oil paint rather than just uh, acrylic. And the the dark ones you were referring to earlier, they were digital images. They were sort of lots of um, um, sort of photo manipulation, if you like. Look, we, we've mm. got we've got the same problem with our canvas. Yeah, we have, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> And that, that sort of, um, you've got the dummy on the left and the, the sort of almost invisible person uh, in the middle there. Um, when I was at, uh, at college, I was very painfully shy. I used to stay in my room most of the time if I wasn't in the studio painting. And apparently I found out I was called the invisible man because I didn't socialize. So okay. <laughs> psych psychologically there, that's me uh, getting a foot into it. Tell me something. Um, you, you're actually one of my first customers. Ah, interesting. And um, we we spoke on the phone prior to the um, container ship actually landing here, well, my container landing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, we, we just started chatting in the beginning. And um, then uh, I actually shipped over a canvas for you before anybody else got a canvas. And um, the the minute the stores opened up, you were the first ones to, uh, first one to actually purchase uh, uh, on, oh, on that's the good. store. That's good. Yeah, and uh, you've purchased, uh, how many times have you purchased now? Oh, uh, I reckon I must nearly have a, a year's worth of canvases ready to be used now. I've got four on the go. And I must have ordered at least five or six times, I would imagine, a couple at a time usually. Um, and when your offers come out, I'm usually there with something to order. What, what attracted me first to, to the canvases, I think, was the fact that I, I could order a canvas and a, a, a frame set so yes. I was always struggling to find a nice frame. Um, the consistency of, of your product, because I, I know if I order another lot, it's going to be almost identical uh, to, to what I've uh, previously been using. Yes. Um, and, the, and now the firmness of the board behind the canvas means I was having problems with straight lines on um, canvases that when I got bigger uh, canvases, they stretched. So if I was okay. trying, using a, a T-square and trying to draw a straight line, they gave, so the line ended up curved, which I don't get with your uh, stuff, so that's good. What do you do on the canvas? Do you prep the canvas or do you just paint straight on the canvas? Well, the, fir the first one I received from you, uh, I tried painting straight on the canvas and that didn't quite work for me. I, it needed a, a sort of a little bit more of a porous uh, surface, I felt. So I, I think I started about three or four paintings on the very first canvas. I uh, remember. Yeah, <laughs> eventually got to the idea of two or three coats of gesso over the top of uh, what I received to start with. Okay. Uh, and then I could uh, do my underdrawing straight onto that. Uh, that worked really well. Uh, and then I just use a, um, a sort, sort of thin wash of acrylic over the top of my drawing just to sort of seal the pencil and give it a little bit of back background color rather than stark white. Um, and that's where I begin. But yeah, uh, really pleased with the product. It's uh, the sharp corners, sharp edges, lack of give. 
trueness of square, which I didn't always get with purchased uh, canvases. Um, and yeah, just the, the, the quality and consistency of the product really has helped me a lot. No, that's great. Well, um, uh, I, I really appreciate your support and actually sticking mm. with me from the beginning. And, you know, we've, you and I, we we actually chat quite a bit during the week as well. Always mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Banter for, uh, backwards and forth, so <laughs> it's it's quite nice, you know. So um, thank you very much for that. I really appreciate it. Um, your five minutes of fame. Let's talk about your five minutes of fame. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, in exploring opportunities, I applied to Sky Arts uh, Landscape Artists of the Year. Yes. Um, uh, so yeah, I was successful there. Got to um, go to Ascot. Uh, uh, where they did the filming. That was a long day, 12 hour filming day for a, an hour program um, with seven other artists. Um, it was called the, the, the Heat in the Heat because it was the hottest day of the year and Ascot race course, so what right out in the open. Um, but yeah, good experience, appeared on television, um, didn't get through to the, the semi-finals, but it was a uh, available experience, met some more artists that we stayed in contact with. Um, nice to see behind the scenes as well with the camera work and the production that goes on behind the production of a program uh, got me a few more sort of uh, followers and likes and conversations going on from as a result of that so yeah it was a good experience so mm -hmm. is, is 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 this the real artist in the family <laughs> yeah yeah probably <laughs> <laughs> that's uh daisy uh, a new uh, studio assistant so uh, she's six months old now little westy uh she won't leave me alone so She's a bit of a pest of wanting to help me out when I'm painting all the time. So I'll often shut her downstairs with, with her mother. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, she's cute. Good fun. Yeah, I, I enjoy the photos that you post with her. Daisy, uh, yeah? That's Daisy, yep. Awesome. Any any advice for, for uh, artists looking to get involved and wanting to get exposure? If we start back to what, what worked for me, um, yeah. I, I mentioned earlier I was sort of painfully shy, I didn't really socialise much. I was... But inside, I was a quiet rebel, if you know what I mean. So when I first started uh, college, um, because I was quite an intricate, detailed painter, the, the tutors suggested I get large canvases and big brushes and loosen up a lot. Yeah. So my rebellion was actually to go for even smaller brushes. Without that little bit of rebellion in me, I, I wouldn't have arrived at my, my current style and, and the, the, the sort of relatively growing su success of the work I'm doing at the moment. So one bit of advice would be, don't be blindly obedient to what people say. Yes. Almost try out the opposite. Um, so if people say, tighten up, you're so loose and abstract. Well, maybe go even more <laughs> to stretch the boundaries of, because why, why did you start using loose paint or, or splashy paint or detail paint in the first place? There must've been something inside you yes. that led you that, in that direction. So push it, take it to an extreme. Or, or try the opposite of what somebody is suggesting might improve your work. I have often found that digging the hole deeper actually works better than getting yourself out of the hole and, and trying a new hole, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, and the other one is just um, a lot of my work, almost all of it probably, is, is steeped in metaphor of some kind or another. Um, and I think there's a metaphor in everything. So maybe seek, seek out not necessarily stories, but what does that subject or item or, or something tell you if you look mm -hmm. at uh, van gogh's sunflowers are they about life or are they about death and wilting and, and dying they could be something different they're not just a still life of a vase of flowers for example yes, and yes. so yeah those those two things quietly rebel look for metaphors this has got a lot of detail in mm -hmm. it has uh, tell me about uh, your salad they they started there was a, an opportunity to uh, to, to show a, a Biennale at uh, Southampton uh, City Museum and Art Gallery. Uh, the theme was multiculturalism. And I, again, wanted to find a, a sort of individual quirk way around this. So I, I came up with these uh, salad ideas. I did two paintings uh, that were accepted. The, the idea of a really nice salad has lots of different types and styles and, and whatever of ingredients. Yes. They, you can taste them all individually if you want, but as a whole, they retain their uniqueness but have this quality yes. about them, uh, where you could dump them all in a, uh, a mixer and make a smoothie out of it and they'll become amalgamated, but they're pretty bland and one taste. Yes. Uh, to me, that was a little bit like 
cultural um, multiculturalism, isn't it nicer to have the uniqueness that contributes to the whole rather than blending it all into conformity? Uh, really? So again, the, me the metaphor behind that was it could have been a salad or a still life looking uh, thing, quite modern in approach from above, but actually there's the metaphor behind it that's a bit more meaningful, hopefully. Your artwork, uh, where do you sell your artwork? Is your artwork for sale? What's the best place to? Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's always for sale. <laughs> um, my portfolio online, uh, at uh, Artwork Archive will give you the prices. Um, I, I apply for uh, opens and things like that, um, which are, uh, is already available. Don't so much online at the moment. Um, I understand why. I mean, you, I'd want to see the real thing in, yeah. in, uh, in actuality first rather than buying from a photograph. Although I do get a little stream of, of, of commissions on, on, online. For Over the last couple of months, uh, there's been a, a lot more followers on my Instagram account, which is interesting. It, it's since the time I, I took, uh, and this might be some advice for uh, people wanting to move on with, with their work. Uh, a, a friend, fellow artist uh, said, you ought to get out from behind your canvas more and we want to see you rather than just your paintings. And I've been very reticent, uh, as you can probably understand from my previous comments, to, to do that. Yeah. So I made this silly video of me climbing up behind one of your canvases, trying to wave and then falling again like I was climbing a wall. Um, I did that and one other silly video with actually me in it. Um, and for some reason, in the last month, I've more than doubled my followers on Instagram. Wow. So, so maybe it's right. Maybe you need to see the artist as well as the product, if that if that makes sense. So that's a lesson I've I've learned, and maybe I need to force myself to get in front of the camera as well as just show the work I do. What you're saying is very very true, and um, that's 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 kind of why I started up my little YouTube series again. So uh, you did a post this last week, which I liked it, and I've been having a look at some of your paintings to to look for to look for the signatures. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I got that idea from Richard Estes, uh, the American artist who does uh, lots of uh, New York and uh, city photorealist type uh, paintings with reflections in a lot of the time. Uh, he's very good at hiding his uh, signatures. There'll be a, a newspaper stand, for example, and on one of the newspapers, it will say a painting by Richard Estes sells for and his initials and all sorts. So a bit of humour and joking. So, yeah, I've just been hiding my monogram, if you like, in parts of the building or faintly in the corner. I, I hate those signatures that almost take over the painting. You see people flamboyantly writing their whole name in big, bold colours across the bottom right corner. That detracts from the painting for me because it doesn't draw you in. So, yeah, I hide mine, uh, as you can see there, that, that the current mm -hmm. one, down there, um, just in what could look like a, a, a brick in a building with a sort of engraving on, like, you know, 50 miles to London or something. Yes, um, so, yes. yeah, that's that's a little quirk of mine. And people, uh, uh, when I've been exhibiting works and talking to uh, visitors to the gallery, part of their enjoyment is trying to find where my next <laughs> monogram is, sort of thing. So <laughs> at least like, that gets them looking at the picture. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like a, a, a Wiz Waldo, Wiz Michael signature. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> the outer oak frames that you've been purchasing, they come in... Um, a standard unfinished oak. You took one of them and you painted it black. I like the the the, the frames, but the colour didn't go with uh, the painting. And it's quite a lot of sort of dark, almost black in that. Yes. Um, so uh, in, in chatting with you again about how to stain uh, and and uh, move on with the canvases, that uh, I got some wood stain uh, and just brushed it on with a, a soft cloth, and it, it went on really well. Uh, yeah. Just a couple of coats first one absorbed really well but it very smoothly interesting i was worried that it might be a little bit blotchy and i need lots of coats to hide it but uh, because of the the nature of the, the frame and, and the veneer it went on very smoothly indeed so i've got a nice black uh yeah. matte uh, feel to the frame but still shows the wood grain through so yeah um yeah. that's given me the confidence if i, I want to go into different colors uh for frames to complement the picture that will definitely work yeah the, this particular one it looks stunning in the black, but it, uh, it could also have worked with a blue frame. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, black frames seem to be quite popular with um, yes. galleries. Uh, I'm not sure why. But yeah, nearly every painting you see in a, in a serious gallery has got a, a, 
a black box frame around it. So uh, maybe because it goes with anything, whatever the location, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think black and white and natural is going to be the most yeah. popular. But I mean, that's why we in the beginning we were going to offer all sorts of varied colors and that. But the whole thing is when an artist paints. We, that's why we left it in in the unsanded raw is so that the artist can decide how to finish it off. And I mean, an artist is a painter, so it's it's not that difficult to just uh, stain or actually paint the no. the the uh, frame. Absolutely, I, I've not done it before, and it was surprisingly easy. I just, uh, as I say, soft cloth, wood stain, mm. wiped it on. Um, that easy. And as you say, we can, uh, as artists, make it bespoke to the. Yes. Uh, the painting, so it's a little bit more unique. You know, I get I get other companies copying our inventions and things we come up with, and uh, mm. e e even even our adverts they copy our adverts. And uh, <laughs> is might... that a compliment in some ways? I guess, isn't it? Yes, they, they wouldn't they wouldn't copy it if they didn't think it was good. Yeah, I came across an individual artist the other day who was uh, on Instagram. who was just showing how he stretched his canvases. And mm. the the corner mitres and and the board look remarkably similar to yours. So, oh, really? Um, and I, yeah, I can't really pin pin down what attracted me to your canvases to start with, but there was something about them, and I I wonder if it was the 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 call, the perfectionism, if you like, almost mm. that the obsession with the detail, getting it right, mm. um, the sh and and that comes across in the sort of sharpness and squareness. Uh, I can rely on your canvases. If I put a T-square on the top, I know it's going to be at 90 degrees to the to the vertical. Mm -hmm. Where on our other purchased canvases, I'd have to measure both sides, then try the T-square, and it was just tedious. So yeah, I can I can trust you. Uh huh. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you have you found have you found that a blocker? to because um, they could online appear expensive, but actually for what you get, they're they're really good value for money. Uh, um, I don't know if you've had any feedback that wow, these are a bit expensive. Do I indulge in that? But um, it's, I, yeah, I, I took the the plunge, and I, I, would, I don't think I'd go back now. They're they're really great. The I I, I had a look on other places, and mm -hmm. they they actually cheaper. Mine are actually cheaper. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you build in the the fact you've got got to get them framed or whatever as well as separately or whatever. Um, I mean, people charge hundreds just for frames, don't they? So yeah, yes. yeah, as a, a collective, it's definitely worth. But uh, have, you got, have you got any plans to manufacture over here as well as you um, keep your, your, your stuff going? Up? You've got you're well established, aren't you, in South Africa? I guess. Yeah, no, no I mean uh, everything's pushed out over there. I mean, they 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 do mm. a couple of thousand a month. Uh, wow, yeah. I'm lying. They do a couple of thousand a week. So they, a week. That's that's impressive. Yeah. They um. I sell probably well. I sell a lot more in South Africa than yeah, but I'm just mm. slowly busy getting um, known. That's the main thing. Yeah, this, yeah. This thing's gonna cut off any second now, Mike. I just want to okay, say, Graham. thank you so much. Uh, um, thank you for chatting to me, and um, yeah, I'm sure we're gonna hook up with each other somewhere down the line. That'd be good. We're not actually too far away physically, are we? No, no, no. Uh, 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 well, so, I've so, now, so yeah, but hopefully we can meet up sometime. That'd be great. No, hundred percent. Thank you so much, and we'll we'll okay. chat online.